Welcome to the new year 2020. Happy new year you guys. You know what, you can continue to expect Mr. Phone to provide you with fresh and exciting tech content this year. And you know what, you can finally also expect Vivo to introduce the Halo Type-C port in its phones this year. Yup, the new Vivo S1 Pro has it, the USB Type-C port. The S1 Pro, as the name suggests, is an upgrade in Vivo's S line of selfie-focused smartphones. It is a beefier version of the S1, but it does a few things differently. I'm a short from Mr. Phone, and let's get down to our full review of the first smartphone to have launched in India in 2020. And if you like the kind of videos that we've been making, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever Mr. Phone puts out a new tech video. In typical Vivo fashion, you get a lot of accessories inside the retail packaging of the Vivo S1 Pro as well. So let's take a look at the unboxing first. One look at the S1 Pro and the design just brings one word to my head and that's whimsical. Let's start by talking about the diamond shaped camera module with rounded edges. I doubt if there is any other phone in the market with this design. Honestly, I think it looks nice. The four cameras are placed inside this module that is only slightly raised. Plus the red accents on the fancy sky, which is the white variant, looks slightly out of place at first but it grows on you and you realize that's the distinguishing factor out here. The colorway of the S1 Pro's plastic body is mostly white, but you have these splotches of purple gradient that you can spot when you look at the phone from an angle. I also like the mauve trim running around the edges. The whole design aesthetic is very pleasing and soothing to the eyes. I'm sure more than us men, the women are gonna find this phone very attractive. I wouldn't use a case on this one. And the best part is that you won't have to either considering white is very good at hiding smudges and scratches. What I particularly enjoyed about the S1 Pro's design is the gently sloping curved edges on the rear. It makes holding the phone with one hand and using it an absolute delight. It has a very nice in-hand feel that cannot be explained in words really. Obviously, the other great thing about the design is that Vivo has finally adopted USB Type-C which sits at the bottom edge. To its left is the mono speaker grill. To top it all off, there's also a headphone jack at the top. No pun intended. Now, for some odd reason, Vivo has decided to go with a hybrid SIM tray instead of triple SIM slot that was available on the S1. Overall, the S1 Pro's strongest selling point is definitely going to be its design. I can see how a lot of people will walk into the stores and find this phone attractive. For what it's worth, I like the design a lot too, despite the fact that it uses plastic instead of glass. All a smartphone manufacturer has to do is nail the ergonomics and you get a thumbs up from me. The S1 Pro has one of the best displays in its price category. The tall 6.38 inch 19.5-9 aspect ratio display is a super AMOLED FHD Plus panel. Colors are bright, crispy and they pop. However, the color temperature is not very accurate with a slightly cooler tone by default. Anyway, you can change the color temperature from the display settings to suit you. Plus, the brightness levels are pretty good too. No complaints there. Now, you do get Wideband L1 support on the phone, which means you can watch streaming content on Amazon Prime and Netflix in HD. Moreover, there's no HDR support, which is possibly why I still think the S1 Pro loses out to the Redmi K20 when it comes to display supremacy under 20K. Also, the Redmi K20 doesn't have a notch, whereas the S1 Pro has a tiny water drop notch. That said, the S1 Pro's display is still pretty impressive. Oh, and by the way, you also get an extra layer of shot sensation 3D glass for protection against scratches. We all know by now that Funtouch OS is not even the most liked Android skin out there. 
there is a major iOS hangover that continues to persist even in the latest version 9.2 running on the S1 Pro. But I have to give it to Vivo's engineers for making it super light, improving RAM management and adding a whole ton of cool features. For example, I like the split screen mode and dark mode on Vivo phones nowadays. Plus the fact that you can lock an app in memory is a handy addition. I know it is not a unique feature but I'm glad it exists on Vivo phones. Now you also get the option to change the grid size and the shape of the icons as well. I think that's handy too. But there are issues. For example, I don't understand why Vivo wants to persist with its first party keyboards for passwords. It is heavy handed and has a very iOS like walled approach. In fact, this time I even noticed that OTPs wouldn't be served to a third party app like SMS Organizer at first attempt. Every single time I had to resend the OTP to get one. In fact, I received them promptly when I switched to the default messaging app. Also, the other thing that I noticed is that the browser actually sends you weird notifications. No Vivo, I don't want to see Kajal Agarwal's sizzling pictures. That's just weird. I also don't understand why Vivo has to go with the whole hog and copy Apple with regards to even changing the wallpaper from within the settings app. And finally, I'm still not happy about the general lack of design consistency across UI in the kerning, the white spaces, fonts, and icon styles. I think Funtouch OS 10 update should streamline things a bit. Let's wait and watch. Talking about the cameras on the Vivo S1 Pro, the 32 megapixel selfie camera is the headliner on this phone. And why shouldn't it be? Give it ample light and with all the beauty effects turned off, which are a plenty, you can get some very good looking selfies with control dynamic range in the background. But you need to turn off beauty mode. I can totally see why selfie lovers would want to buy this phone. However, one thing baffles me. Why wouldn't Vivo give bokeh effects in selfies? There is a portrait mode, but it doesn't blur the background, which is just completely weird. The app also has a very confusing layout, sincerely. For example, you can switch on HDR. This is actually auto HDR and not an always on one. Anyway, moving on to the rear cameras, you get a 48 megapixel Samsung sensor as a primary camera. It takes pictures that are definitely underexposed with a lot of details missing in the highlights. However, that helps keep the highlight clipping in check. So, you know, some advantage there. The color accuracy is fine, not too great. In close-ups, the phone struggles badly with reds and turns them pink. Low-light shots from this camera look okay and, to be entirely honest, there are far better phone cameras out there. Furthermore, there is no night mode to speak of, so that's another downer. There's a dedicated 2MP depth sensor and you do get great portraits with a good detection out of the phone. I quite like the portrait lighting features too. Now there's also the dedicated 8 megapixel wide angle camera that takes dull and soft pictures. And the same is the case for the 2MP macro camera. I'm not a fan of both the sensors. As for video, the S1 Pro tops out at 1080p 30fps on wide angle and the 48MP sensor. There's no stabilization either. Again, this is a big letdown. From what I can tell from the testing that I've done on the cameras of the S1 Pro, I think that the S1 Pro is great for shooting human subjects. It could be of yourself when you're taking a selfie or of someone else when you're taking a portrait shot. But for every other scenario, there are much better cameras out there. The S1 Pro uses Snapdragon 665 SoC coupled with a whopping 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. In comparison, even a phone like the Vivo U20 uses Snapdragon 675, so you know a lot of people must be worried about the performance. See, if you are a performance hungry nerd watching this video, you should stop right now. The 665 is definitely not the best processor you can get at this price. For example, if you compare the benchmark scores of the S1 Pro against the Realme X2 and the Redmi K20, the S1 Pro cuts a sorry figure. Take a look at the numbers to judge for yourself. While you can game on the S1 Pro, titles like PUBG and COD offer a better experience on phones with Snapdragon 710 and above. But here's the thing, if you don't play a lot of games, the S1 Pro offers excellent daily performance. This phone just works. I didn't face a single lag or stutter in my time with the phone and the RAM management is stupendously good. The phone ran as many apps as I wanted in the background without shutting them down intermittently. Obviously the S1 Pro is not great for graphics intensive workloads, but it is a workhorse that moves at breakneck speed for regular usage. It was a delight for my everyday use case where apps opened instantly and I had multiple social networks open in the background, more than 20 tabs on Chrome and a whole lot more without really stressing out the phone. A lot of credit also goes to the super fast UFS 2.1 storage inside the phone. I'm genuinely super impressed with the regular day to day performance. Also, amping up the experience even further is the fast in display fingerprint scanner and face unlock. Now, I also tested the 4G performance on Airtel and the call quality as well. I had no issues whatsoever except that maybe the earpiece could have been slightly louder. 
otherwise it was all smooth sailing. Moving on to the S1 Pro's audio quality, the mono speaker at the bottom can get loud and it is fairly clear as well. However, the audio performance from the headphone jack is average at best. In my testing, I noticed that it lacked the sort of dynamic sound that I have experienced in Vivo devices in the past. I was slightly disappointed with that. Finally, the Vivo S1 Pro comes with a 4500mAh battery. Unfortunately, you can't check the screen on time on the phone, but I did track one and a half days of battery life on heavy usage. You also get a bundled 18W fast charger inside the box that can charge the phone from 0 to 100 in exactly 2 hours. I'm just confused that the Z1X has a faster 22.5W bundled charger, so why didn't Vivo go with the same solution for the S1 Pro? It's just weird. In the end, for most geeks like me out there who are watching this video, the S1 Pro is probably not going to be an option. But for everyone else, I can see how this phone works. For example, I like the fact that it has a good design, it's got a good display, and it's got a speedy but fairly reliable performance as well. And of course, it's got great selfie taking abilities. So I think that there is a market out there for the S1 Pro. Having said that, I'm not particularly a fan of the rear camera's performance or even Fun Touch OS for that matter. Now, you know what? Let's just compare the S1 Pro against its immediate competitors and see where it stacks up. From the very same Vivo family, the Z1X definitely offers a lot of things more. From the core performance to the faster charging, the Z1X just feels like a better buy overall. But the S1 Pro takes better selfies, if only slightly, and it looks better for what it is worth. Again, but looks are subjective. Compared to the Redmi Note 8 Pro, the S1 Pro has only a couple of redeeming factors, the Super AMOLED panel plus lightweight chassis and the better selfie camera. So if you want the S1 Pro, you have to crave for a better selfie camera. For every other need, the Note 8 Pro is just leagues better than the S1 Pro. And finally, if you compare it to the Realme X2, the S1 Pro actually stands no chance. All the good points such as AMOLED panel and selfie camera are matched or even bettered by the Realme X2. And to top it off, you also get 30 watt fast charging and a friggin Snapdragon 730G SoC. Maybe to a certain extent, the S1 Pro might look better to some folks, but the X2 has a glass body, so that's a more premium material for sure. So the X2 Pro is a clear winner here. All in all, I really liked using the S1 Pro. There's some sort of X factor to it that sort of made it work for me, but I'm pretty sure that this phone is not going to be for everyone. So that's it from me. That was our full review of the Vivo S1 Pro. I hope you guys liked it. Do let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the phone. Until next time, this is Ashar from Mr. Phone signing off. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends.